I think I'm live, just waiting until I'm live on Instagram. Here I am on Instagram as well. Awesome. And I promise to, oops, once again, I need to fix my Instagram phone and stuff. Okay, so I promise to answer all of you guys' question, questions about hypnosis in this video today. If this is the first video you're watching of me, let me introduce myself. My name is Jenny. I help people with hypnosis to attract more success, more money, more happiness, more fulfillment, more confidence into their lives, all with hypnosis. And myself, I quit my job after my very first hypnosis session to travel the world and work online. Say hi if you're watching this live. Tell me if you're watching the replay, put hashtag replay, and let's get started. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, okay, I need to figure out if I can see if there are any comments here. So, okay, not yet. So if anybody has a question, you can ask during this live video if anybody has a question that is related to hypnosis or, yeah, if you want anything answered about hypnosis. Oh, personal development and hypnosis. I'm trying to figure this phone situation out. Okay, let's get to the very first question. The first question is, can hypnosis help you heal from a health condition? So the answer, the short answer is yes, but let's get a little bit deeper into it. Most health conditions, like 90, more than 90% of them, they are related to stress or to another, and stress is related to another emotional root cause. So for example, heart attacks, breast cancer even, or anything that has to do with your heart area comes a lot from grief. Um, stomach things have to do with um, resentment as well. So every physical problem has a mental issue. So that means if you resolve the mental root cause of the physical problem, there have been spontaneous healings happening after that. Um, so it's it's really, really incredible what you can do when you do like hypnosis or or Reiki or healing when you really tackle that root cause of your physical illness. So absolutely, anything that has to do with your mind can heal your physical body. And especially also because let's say you're listening to um, a hypnosis before going to bed and after you wake up when your subconscious mind is the most active then or you know you're listening to health affirmations like i'm healthy my body's healthy healthy i'm feeling good or whatever this can help your body really build up its immune system as well and really feel better so next question before i forget to get to this so um here on instagram somebody is asking what can i expect to feel in hypnosis thank you for asking this um i think it's Jitella, Jitella or something. I hope I um, pronounced this correctly. So what can I expect to feel in hypnosis? Well, close your eyes, everybody. Close your eyes. And that's pretty much how you're going to feel in hypnosis. Um, <laughs> that's the easy answer, really. That's really the answer, easy answer. Um, you're going to feel very relaxed, very, very relaxed. And you're going to realize that you're going to be a lot more creative and you're going to be a lot more you're, you are able to open yourself up to what you would never let yourself open up to in your conscious mind. So basically every underlying root causes for maybe your physical illness or for depression or for anxiety, all the root causes are in your subconscious mind. So you are going to be able to get them um, out of you. So to say you're going to know them and you're going to be so I can't really say that you're going to feel them, <laughs> but the way you feel in hypnosis is basically just very, very relaxed. Okay. Another question from T. Jaitela, T. G. Tela. How can you tell what is the root cause that needs to be tackled to allow for the physical healing to happen? Well, that depends. So when you, let's say you're going into hypnosis and while you're in hypnosis, you're going to ask, what is the root cause of my, mm, my heartburn or my stomach ulcer or whatever? What is the emotional root cause behind that? And then your subconscious mind will tell you, here, look at this. You have to forgive X, Y, Z, this person or this situation 
or your subconscious mind will tell you you're still holding resentment against blah, 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 blah. So this is how you can tell. And once you are letting go of this negative emotion that is, um, that is bound to this physical problem, you are going to feel improvement or even spontaneous healing after the hypnosis or after Reiki or after whatever you're doing subconsciously to fix your physical problem. Okay, let's get to the next question. How do you know that you can trust what you see in the hypnotic state? Well, you can always trust whatever is coming from your subconscious because in your subconscious, your subconscious stores everything that needs to be stored. And also your subconscious wants you to, what do humans want? We want to be happy. We want to survive. Is that correct? Yes, I, I hope so <laughs> for everybody. <laughs> so you can be sure that whatever your subconscious mind is trying to show you, trying to bring up for you, trying to make you see, to make you hear, to make you feel, whatever that is, whatever your subconscious is doing to make you realize, wow, okay, I have to work on something in order to get better, or I had to know this in order to get better, or I had to you know, change this in order to get better. So whatever you see in a hypnotic state, you can interpret it like, you know, for example, if you see animals like horses or frogs or flies or whatever, you always after that, you can look into a interpretation of animals. And then it will tell you, okay, here are five different interpretations of when you see this certain animal in a dream or somewhere else. And then when you read up those interpretations and then the one that resonates with you the most, that is what it means for you. And then most of the time you will go like, ah, oh, now I get it. You know, now I can understand what my subconscious is trying to tell me. Or our subconscious speaks to us in colors as well. And if we get into the interpreter interpretations of colors, that's how we can also know more and figure out more what is really going on behind our conscious mind. Um, I hope this answered the question. Uh, okay, next one is to what extent can you do hypnosis to uh, can you do hypnosis on yourself and what are the limitations when compared to receiving it from someone trained in hypnosis? Great question. Okay. So hypnosis on yourself, if you are a trained hypnotist um, like me, you can do a lot on yourself so for example if you want to get rid of a bad habit like um, procrastination right or like um, not working out enough or eating candy or whatever you can easily do a hypnosis on yourself because then you can record yourself and you can play that recording before you go to sleep or right after waking up because that's when your subconscious mind again is the most active so for example, what I did was <laughs> I started out, I was eating way too many desserts, way too much candy, way too much sweets, right? So I recorded myself and I said to myself, um, Jenny, from now on, you're no longer going to eat dessert. You're no longer going to eat candy and so on and so forth. But instead, you're going to crave green veggies. So what happened? The minute after I or not, okay, the, the first meal, after the first meal of this hypnosis, after my lunch, I was craving a green cucumber. <laughs> and that is no lie. I kid you not, this really happened. And it really lasted until I didn't want it to last anymore. Because then eventually, like two months later, I flew into a new country and I was like, oh, I want to try their desserts and their candy or whatever. So I actually was back to eating desserts because I didn't want any, want it any longer. So now, but today, if I wanted to do the same thing, I could do that again for myself w without any problems. Or if you want to work out more, you can, you know, set yourself a schedule, however you want your schedule to be, you, maybe you want to work out in the morning, and then you can make yourself a hypnosis recording that says, I, from now on, I want to work out every morning, right after I wake up, I want to have my clothes ready. I just want to jump into my workout clothes, and then I just want to work out. That works as well. Um, you can take, there's probably a little Udemy course or something on self-hypnosis. I'm sure you, there's a lot of um, stuff online, how you can hypnotize yourself. But if you want to take a course, um, I, can remind you, I, re I can recommend you one as well. So let me know. Um, and I can, I can give you a link um, of the course that I took. It was online as well. And it was, it's been really, really amazing. And now let's get into the difference of 
self-hypnosis and receiving it from somebody else. So if you're having a deeper emotional issue, if you have anxiety, depression, if you have, um, or, you know, if you're trying to lose weight and you know, that is something that is emotionally underlying there, for example, you know, you are, um, in your family being fat was a horrible thing, but now because you wanted to rebel against your family, you're fat now. And you're, you know, you're just, you're basically rebelling with that against your family, and, but you don't do anything good to yourself. So that's one example. Or for example, if you, let's say you are anxious about your future. Why are you anxious? Is it the fear of failure or is it the fear of success? Or is it the fear of what other people are going to think about you? So th this kind of stuff you can really figure out with a trained hypnotherapist or hypnotist who can really take you back to the very root cause of what it is that is holding you back from being your best self, from living your best life. And that's where people like me come in, for example, with, um, you know, my clients when I, when I um, hypnotize them, then we always go to the soul space or we go to a space where they're really, really relaxed and everything is um, quiet and calm. And then I ask their subconscious mind, okay, now take us back to the root cause of your depression. Take us back to the root cause of your fear of being judged. Take us back to the root cause of um, your procrastination. And when we're in that state, when I do this with people, then I have, I can take them around. I can guide them because sometimes let's say they think this is the root cause, but then I ask them again, do you feel like this is the root cause? Or do you feel like there's a situation that happened before that, that is the root cause. And then when they're saying, yes, I can take them to the next situation when they're saying, no, I think we got it. Then they're fine. But then I can still do something and I can put something into their mind that is making this situation that happened into a positive space. And also I can take them to a safe place if there, if there's a need be, um, and I can just guide them so they're safe. And so they're really um, just can trust and then they, they can let go that way, you know? So because if you can let go and if you're with your trusted hypnotherapist, then you can really just relax and you, you know that they have their best, that, that they have your best interest at heart and that they can really guide you to the point where you can heal. So again, if anybody's online, say hello. Let me see who's there. Hi, AJ. Hi, Liam. Thank you for watching. And here, who we have here, Adam, Nick, Lynn. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Thank you guys for being here. Um, let's get to the next question. Again, if you want a question answered about hypnosis, let me know and I will get to it. And I will, I will look it up in the comments on Instagram or Facebook both. Okay, um, here. How effective can just one session be compared to if, to if you do a series of sessions? So again, here's the thing. One session, things are usually either you want to get rid of a bad habit, like smoking or eating candy. You can get, get to that within one session. A single session is enough. Second thing is if you want to um, establish a good one. So for example, working out more or um, what else? Hmm, what else do you want to do good? <laughs> eat healthier, um, eat more produce or whatever. That's usually pretty easy um, to do in just a single session. Also, what a single session has done for my client, we focused on all her money blocks, all her blocks around money. And within just a single session, she doubled her profits after just one single session, because we smashed through all her limiting beliefs about around money, which came down to, you know, like limiting beliefs around money can have to do with you. You're, you're not being confident enough to show up. It can have to do with, you're not trusting the universe that there's always going to be enough and you are abundant and so on and so forth. It can have to do with, um, what else? you're not feeling worthy of making money or you thinking money is terrible or bad or whatever. So that is, um, that can happen within one session. Incredible things can happen within one session. The, but the benefit of doing a series of hypnosis is if you really want to go through a, what I now call a met metamorphosis, if you want to go through that, if you want to go through a real transformation of your, I don't want to say personality because you're always kind of be this, <laughs> kind of the same, but the um, you're going to go through a metamorphosis of your 
your life, I would say, your life. So for example, I helped a client get rid of her suicidal thoughts completely, um, find her purpose and um, be become confident and become way happier just because we did a series of sessions for three months every single week. We did a, we did hypnosis sessions and it's enough if you do them um, twice a month as well because a lot can change. And then I helped another client also find her purpose and she's doing an online business now and it's going and she's both of them, both of these people that I just talked about, they want to become hypnotherapists because they're like, oh my goodness, this has helped me so much and only in three months. And it, it, it can happen within such a short amount of time. It's just so amazing and incredible. So I can only recommend to do series because also I have done series and it's helped me also with my money mindset, with fixing relationships and with, um, you know, working on my childhood in a way so that I can understand my parents better so that I can gain perspective or oh, they didn't want this for me, but they couldn't do it any better because they also didn't know any, any, any better. Right. Or, and, or this wasn't against me what they did. So that's really, really powerful. Um, yeah. So I think, I hope this question was answered. Um, if you, if you do more sessions, so more sessions is always amazing. And the more you do it, the more you get hypnotized, the better you will get at it as with everything, you know, you will definitely get better at, as hypnosis as, uh, at hypnosis as well. Hi, Christine. How are you? How are you? Um, okay. So what else? Okay. So here, somebody else says, I'm trying to maintain good habits around sticking to a sleep schedule and other essential routines that have been a struggle for me. So for um, sleep schedule, um, I would definitely say one session can help, especially if you listen to a recording before going to bed and after you wake up. Um, other essential routines, you have to do a several recording for each one because I don't want to like overwhelm your mind with one recording and that would not work. Like if you have five different suggestions in one recording, would not work. Okay, let's see. We have something else here. Is there a way to work around not being able to visualize clearly? Absolutely, because um, as a hypnotherapist, you can also tell people to feel, to hear, um, to see. I mean, that's visualizing or whatever, but you can also tell them to feel or to see or imagine. And the more hypnosis you do, the better you will get at visualizing as well. And like I said, it's, it's, it's really no problem. We can, we can also do that, but, um, normally you are able to visualize because we, we train your brain slowly to do so. Like with every little thing, with every little step that we take to get you down into hypnosis, we work on your visualization skills. Okay. So here's another question. So if a person is naturally shy and quiet, but wants to change that their personality doesn't change. <laughs> okay. Great one. Thank you for that. Um, so yes, it can change. So for example, for me, right, you, you, most of you guys won't believe that, but I was actually fucking shy. I was not speaking more than two words or two sentences to my old roommates in LA, like 10 or 11 years ago. I did not know how to make conversation. I felt very self-conscious about myself. I just felt like I'm a loser and whatnot. So I was really, really shy and quiet today. I have changed so that I can speak on video to the, to you guys. I have changed so that I can speak to people in a normal environment. But at the same time, there's some times where I'm still shy and where I'm still reserved and quiet, but also because I want to sometimes. And now I'm confident enough to say, hey, now in this situation, I want to be quiet and shy and I'm okay with it. I don't beat myself up for it. So I guess I would say, yeah, the personality changes a little bit. But what I meant with that earlier, that your personality doesn't change, was more as to either, you know, like simple thing, like either you're a good person or you're not. Like that can change too, I guess. Okay, so scratch that. <laughs> okay, like if you see it that way, your personality will change. But there are certain things that um, will still stay the same. Okay, so what else do we have? Hi, Mike. Hi. Um, okay. What are the different types of hypnosis? Yes. Okay. So we have a recording. Like I said, we can do this for, um, establishing great habits or kicking bad habits to the curb, or we have stage hypnosis, which is a hypnosis where we, um, not we, I don't do that, <laughs> but where people 
make other people do crazy things on stage, like acting like a chicken, barking like a dog, kissing men, men kissing men. And if they don't want that, they will stop or, you know, not liking chocolate or something else. Like it is ridiculous what you can do on stage hypnosis, but that only works because the person who is the subject doesn't care. They don't care. They're confident enough to make a fool out of themselves on stage and they will let the, hypno the hypnotist do that, the stage hypnotist. So that's another um, type of hypnosis. Then there can be hypnosis for like spiritual growth. You can, um, what I really love is past life regressions or um, talking to your spirit guides or astral projection or whatever it is. All this spiritual stuff can also be done with hypnosis. And you can do something that is called age regression which is basically working around mostly things like traumas, depression, anxiety, because these are all happening in childhood. And that means we take you back to um, that age where this first shitty situation happened. We work around it and we make it positive for you to move on. And um, we can also do a future visualization where you visualize yourself as your future self, which for some reason has been my motto for this week. <laughs> Um, so there's lots of different things you can do. Um, and then there is, so hypnotists have come up with different ways. For example, Mar Marisa Peer has come up with RTT, which is, um, rapid transformational therapy, which basically you will do like two or three sessions around the root cause. And then they will give you a recording for 30 days. And then they say you should be fine for some people. It works for others. It doesn't. Um, then what else do we have? We just have, you know, healing hypnosis. If you have to heal a physical thing dentists here's the crazy thing this was more common in like the, before you had anesthesia i think so people would hypnotize you and today still dentists use this if somebody is scared of going to the dentist they use that and they will um, hypnotize you to be calm and relaxed and quiet <laughs> so also if you do anesthesia like you can really hypnotize somebody to not feel something in their leg or in their arm or wherever somebody is doing surgery on there have been surgeries on people's brains and skulls where they were hypnotized and didn't have any anesthesia so that's that's the most incredible thing i find that you can do with hypnosis that just blows my mind okay let me see if there's any question here Okay, so Liam is asking, are there any people who shouldn't do hypnotherapy, for example, people with epilepsy or neurodiverse individuals? Absolutely. Um, you will always have to consult with your doctor since I'm not a trained doctor. I know that epilepsy can be quite um, challenging, but I also know that hypnosis has helped some people with epilepsy. So you, I would always say, you know, or for example, if somebody is on... Um, yeah. I have to navigate my phone and my computer. If somebody is on antidepressants or any other pills or whatever, um, what I always say to my clients is like, hey, go check with your doctor if that's okay. If you do hypnosis, in most cases, it's fine. Um, and yeah, so that's that's really the most important thing. If your um, hypnotist is always should tell you like, hey, you know, check with your doctor. But yeah, other than that, it's really for everybody i can't think of i and i know that a lot of for bipolar people it has helped a lot of people um schizophrenia it has helped some people as well so again you i would not do that just because i'm not trained in that and i kind of like yeah this is not yeah I'm, I'm not trained in it but i know um one friend of mine for example she actually um has helped herself with um so to to heal her not even but just like to get way, 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 way better with her um, bipolarity, bipolar thing. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, you can see I'm not an ex expert in that. Um, but there are hypnotists who are and that you should go to, but that is not my expertise. Um, another story when let's go back to helping you with physical things, right? I know a girl, she's another hypnotist who has helped herself walk again she was in a wheelchair and she helped herself walk again with hypnosis with self-hypnosis that's the most incredible story also i love that okay um all right let me go see what other questions we have how does hypnosis differ to guided meditation thank you for the question um that's very simple mm, hypnosis has a purpose Meaning, like I said in the beginning, you can get rid of a bad habit, you can establish a good one, 
you can um, get to the root cause of your depression, anxiety, whatever, or you, um, you know, whatever it is that you, you, it, it just has a purpose. You want to do something with that hypnosis. A guided meditation is more like it's either a visualization or yeah, visualize your future self or visualize um, how you're walking down a path and going here, going there. It's more for relaxation. Um, but obviously people now nowadays mix them up and, and they, they combine the two. And I know a lot of self-development people and coaches and whatnot who, who kind of mix them up and who call it guided meditation. But at the end of the day, it's also nothing different than a hypnosis because it has a purpose. Because there are people who do a guided meditation that will take you to your future self or to a past life or whatever. And that's still a hypnosis because it also has a purpose. Um in what circumstances is it best used? Again, guided meditation for, let's call it simple things, for no complex mental issues. So for example, if you want to visualize your future self, that's very powerful. So a guided meditation is great. If you want to um, quit smoking, hypnosis is used best, obviously. There's no really guided meditation that would really get that deep, unless somebody really wants to quit. Mm. Okay, can hypnosis help with erasing bad memories? Okay, great question. So erasing bad memories, you can never erase a bad memory. Unfortunately, it will always be with you. However, because our brain cannot differentiate from reality versus imagination, we can transform this bad memory into a positive one. So for example, if your father or mother have called you lazy as a child and you took that on for yourself and now you're like not losing weight, right? Because you think you're lazy and you can't lose weight because lazy people can't lose weight. So then you would go back into this memory for hypnosis. And this can be obviously with way worse memories, but I don't want to trigger anybody. So I'm using this simple and yeah, I'm using this simple traumatic experience. Um, to, to demonstrate what we can do and how we work with memories. So if you have that bad memory in your mind and if you have that belief, belief stuck in your head, I am lazy, we would go and go into that memory and help you see why your parents have said that, why they did that. And because most your parents, most of the time, they really have your best interest at heart and they're only doing what they can and, and they're only doing their best. Um, but sometimes they obviously fail because they're human, right? So we will help you see from the perspective of your parents and from your perspective now what you've learned, you can teach that little girl that is or that little boy that is still inside you, you can talk to them, you can speak to them. And so we can make this memory that you have a little bit more positive and we can trick your brain into believing um, or we can we can make your brain believe that you believe this memory in a good way so that it's not bad anymore. You understand what I'm saying? Like you just have to switch perspective. And sometimes already that simple switch in a perspective helps you not see this as a bad memory, but it will make you see that this bad memory has contributed to who you are today. And it has contributed to making you the best version of yourself that you are today. So it's really, really powerful to do that with um, memories rather than forgetting them. Because if you would forget them, you would not be who you are today. And most of the time you are a way better person today than you have been like a few years ago. So it should be there. And it was there for a reason, obviously. And we will make you see that reason why this had had to happen to you. Um, yeah, we, we will make you see that. Um, can hypnosis help with short temper? Absolutely. <laughs> short temper has to do with you. It has to do, it's all on you, right? It's not because, so other, if other people are annoying you, there's a certain aspect within you that is annoying you and that uh, you don't like. There's a certain aspect where, okay, you know, why do I not like that? Why does that trigger me so much? What is the root cause of this triggering me? So we can go to the, to the bottom of this. And so with a short temper, we just find out the root cause. Why do you have a short temper? Is it because you you don't accept what other people are doing, how they're treating you. So why do you not accept that? Do you not feel worthy of that? Or do you not feel worthy of, you know, them treating you better or whatever? So yes, it can absolutely help with a short temper because short temper is just, 
has to do with self-love, self-respect, self-worth all the time. And um, it's, again, it has to do with you. It doesn't have to do with the other people, what they're doing, but it's really on you. Um, next question. Whew, I'm loving all your guys' questions. <laughs> Let's see if we... Ah, <laughs> okay. I got a question from Reza. Can you help people in South Africa with smoking? Okay, let me tell you something real quick about smoking, right? Smoking, if you want to quit smoking, the only way for you to stop smoking is if you really, really, really want it. If you are saying, oh, my spouse wants me to stop working. Yeah, that's not going to work. You have to want it. And when you want it, you can come to me and I'm happy to help you. And when you're ready to quit smoking, come to me. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. We'll fix that within a session. That's no problem. Um, but if, again, if you don't want it, if the people of South Africa don't want to stop smoking, we can do it. Okay, next um, question is very interesting. Does hypnosis work with people who really don't believe it? Okay, so thank you for this question, first of all. It can, and let me tell you why. Hypnosis is simply relaxing your body and mind. So you need to really don't, you don't really need to believe in hypnosis. You just need to believe in your, in the relaxation of your body and mind. And I have done that with people who didn't believe in hypnosis, but because it's just relaxing, then they were like, oh, okay. Like, you know, there, there's no, it's no magic. It's no weird thing. It's not crazy. It's just, it's just simple relaxation of the body and mind so that your subconscious mind can come to the forefront and really give you the root cause of your issues and really give you, you know, what's, what's hidden, what's beneath the surface. And that's why it works. So you don't need to believe in the word hypnosis, but you just need to believe in the relaxation. And most of the people do believe in that. So it does work on them. <laughs> um, but if when it doesn't work is when people don't want to be hypnotized. So you can, you know, somebody doesn't want to be on stage and act like a chicken. That's not going to happen. If somebody doesn't want to be on stage and not like chocolate, that's not going to happen because our values are... Um, our values and what's the other word that I'm looking for? Eh. Our values and <laughs> our beliefs are stored in our subconscious mind. And if anything that I say goes against your values and beliefs, you're not going to be hypnotized and it's not going to work for you. That's when it doesn't work. That's the only thing. Okay. Do we have any more questions? Let me see. Let me see. Ah, here. Okay. We have one more. Um. Mm. Okay. Okay. Here's the next question. What if I can't recall childhood memories? You think you can't recall them, but 100%, I can really say that 100% of my clients recall a memory that they don't consciously or that they wouldn't consciously recall. Let's say somebody has, is, is afraid of speaking in front of an audience or speaking in a live video like right now. And that goes back to their childhood, 100%. In every single session that I did, it went back to their childhood. And it was always an event that they would never have recalled consciously. It's always a single thing that they now see as stupid or unimportant or whatever that will keep them from speaking up in public. So you can recall the childhood memories. You can recall things that from when you were in the womb with your parents, you uh, with your mom, sorry. <laughs> you can recall past lives even. Um, you just have to allow yourself. That's the most important thing. You have to give yourself the, the space and the, the safety and the, you know, you, you have to really allow yourself to be guided to that space. You have to allow yourself to, to let these memory co memories come up because they will come up if you allow it. Um, yeah, let me see if I have any other questions. Okay, I think these are all the questions. <laughs> okay, wow, this was a lot. Thank you guys so much for submitting your questions. I really appreciate that. Um, if you do want to do a hypnosis session, if you want me to, um, for example, if you want me to smash your money blocks so that you can make more money and double your profits as well, um, hit me up, schedule a call with me. I'm going to put the link in the comments. If you want to quit smoking, if you want to go on lives and, and really have fun and be confident enough to go on lives on Facebook or Instagram, or if you really want to take part into a magical metamorphosis where you really 
find yourself, your true self, and where you really be when where you're confident enough to stand up for yourself, to be yourself, and to live this life as yourself, as the best version of yourself. Love what you do, get paid for it, and really make an impact where you're helping other people, where you really want to change your life for the better. Hit me up. Um, I'm gonna put the link in the comments. And yes, that's it. I think I want to check one more time for any questions. Um, before I go, nope. Okay, somebody asked me where I'm from. I'm from Germany. I was born and raised in Germany. I lived in LA for eight years and I've been traveling for the past four years working online. So, yes, okay. Whew. <laughs> Love you guys and have a great rest of your day. I'll see you. And yeah, if you have any questions, you can also um, private message me. Bye.